What is up there everyone? Welcome to a new video here. In this one here, I'm gonna share with you guys 25 lessons that I've learned over these 25 years that I've been alive. So this video is in the end more intended for myself as personal reflecting, but I do hope that the lessons actually will be of value to you as well. Down below in the description, you can find all the books, the podcasts, the audiobooks, and people that I consider my mentors or people that I look up to, you can find that all down in the description. And with this video, I in fact also want to thank all every one of you who subscribed to my channel. I'm currently at 130 subscribers, which like honestly coming from zero subscribers, I, I really appreciate it actually. And I'm really humbled for each and every one of you who is subscribed to my channel and watching my videos and hopefully, or that's my intent at least with each one of those videos, you will get some value out of it that can be useful for your life. Let's go and uh, dig into this video here of 25 valuable lessons learned in uh, these 25 years that I've been alive. You know, the world and life in itself can, can kind of look pretty in negative in a lot of ways and it can really portray this kind of very serious place. The funny thing is that a lot of people go through life being very, you know, serious without actually knowing why. Because in the end, if you think about it, there's just so little we know about just life and the world and ourselves. We know very little things in the end about our own human brain. Like no one without any di disagreements can tell you what life is about, right? No one really knows. While you are still here on this wild ride called life, try to just enjoy it a little bit more by taking life, others, and most importantly yourself a little bit less seriously. If you can try to see life with a little bit of different glasses and try to just tilt them a little bit, and you could actually come to see that life could be also a grand comedy show. Like if you really pay attention um, just how people behave to themselves and to others and to the world. Uh, it's sometimes so just ridiculous. Don't fall into this hole of taking everything so serious because life will become a very grim place and it doesn't have to be that way. A lot of my work is trying to, to help people actually and it's really coming out of a place from my heart when you get sort of negative comments on your work that is actually intended to really help someone it can really feel like a punch in the face but the truth is no matter how good your actions are intended there will always be someone who will not like it or disagree with it no matter how good it is you can never please everyone because everyone has a different idea of how life should be lived or what is right and what is wrong in the greatest things like the best things ever you can always find something not good in it you can always a lot of people who just only throw comments um, are mostly the ones <laughs> who don't do a lot in the end themselves that's why they comment and, and just go around and, and just spread negativity. But don't let that stop you. Don't let someone's voice, especially if it's just someone, like one person, uh, commenting on your work or saying something negative or not liking what you're doing, don't let that stop you from creating the changes that this world deserves. Just remember that, because it's a really important lesson and something that has helped me through these 25 years now of being here uh, quite a lot. So this is honestly something that I just would recommend to anyone before going off to college or university is take a year, best is a solo backpacking trip and just venture out into the world and try everything you've ever wanted to try. Go and do crazy things, do a lot of different jobs while you're traveling, go to different countries, see different cultures, just experience life. Because the problem is a lot of times that people jump into a study not really knowing 
who they are. And then throughout the study, they come to find out that they don't really like it and actually are passionate about something else. With the result that they have to change the study and then do that over again. Or, or that people actually remain in the study because they don't know actually what else to do. And then they end up with a degree in a field that they're not really that much passionate about. But of course, this doesn't just imply for people wanting to go off to college or something. This just implies for everyone. And the reason why I'm saying traveling is because it brings so many experiences. It puts like traveling is being out there in the world. It's not about laying on a beach and just sitting there. That's not traveling. That's just, I don't know, a beach vacation. Traveling is moving. It is moving and experiencing life. And you can say like, yeah, well, that costs me money, but there's so many ways to travel cheaply as using Helpix or Workaway. Same concepts where you work uh, for exchange for free foods and accommodation, or you can use couch surfing, or you can, you know, hitchhike, or you can get a working visa in countries like Australia or New Zealand or so on. You know, that one year time that you are off there in the world, that will be one of the best investments that you will ever make because you have a greater understanding about who you are and what you want to do. Travel and experience life. And the sooner you can do this, honestly, the better. Life was never meant to be easy. Life was never meant to be comfortable. Life is meant to be a progress of growth. I really fundamentally think that life is about growth. This is actually a, a quote from the Australian Aboriginals that I really loved and I kind of summarized my belief about life. We are all visitors to this time, this place. We are just passing through. Our purpose here is to observe, to learn, to grow, to love and then we return home. Every challenge that life throws at me, I see as a challenge. I don't see as that life is trying to punish me. That doesn't mean that they are not easy, of course. They still don't feel great. They're still difficult. But at least with that belief, it helps me to move forward and to actually find meaning within suffering. People who only feel love inside themselves will give love to others in the world. People who feel hate in themselves will give hate to others in the world. How you respond to someone and how you act in the world is a personal reflection of what is inside you. And if you are aware of that, it's actually a lot more easier to not take something personally when someone acts all of a sudden like very angry at you without you actually doing anything to upset them. If that happens, just detach yourself a little bit emotionally and rationally think about what just happened. Because a lot of times if you do that, you will come to realize that it wasn't what you did that upset them, but that it was a personal demon coming up. Remember that how people respond and react to others is a personal reflection of their insights. This is something that I've learned from a very young age when I was three years old. I gotta be careful how I put this because I seriously, I really, I don't wish the pain of losing someone as a parent or a sibling or a dear friend. I don't wish that pain about an, upon anyone. What I would wish upon people is the realization that anyone can die. <clears throat> You know, not just people around you, but even people very close to you. Losing my dad when I was three years old has installed at a very young age in me this understanding that people can die actually, and you can die as well. So while you are still here alive, while you are still breathing, while you still have time, don't live a life with regrets. It's the worst poison a lot of people take on a daily basis. You choose to not travel the world, even though you've always wanted to do that. You choose to not ask that girl or boy out that you've always wanted to ask out. You choose to not follow your dreams. You choose to not contact that old friend of yours anymore. You take in the regrets. You take in the poison of regrets. You don't know what the future will hold and what will be taken away from you. What you do know is what you have right now. So work with that and live with no regrets.
If you're not aware of the thoughts that are inside your head, likely that there's quite some destructive things going on, you know, because you're not aware of your voice. And in general, that voice is mostly drawn more to negative thoughts. Becoming conscious of your thoughts is actually a very, very powerful thing. And, and thoughts is something that you can take control of right now even. Becoming aware of your thoughts is like the first step in that. And to be aware of your thoughts, learning a bit more about them is a very helpful thing because it gives you understanding. And that's why the book, The Untethered Soul, The Journey Beyond Yourself, it's such a powerful book because it helps you understand your thoughts and to actually influence them and actually uh, let positive thoughts enter more. And by doing that more and more naturally, they start to appear more and more. My whole look because of my thoughts about myself, others in the world, it's a very beautiful view actually that I have upon a lot of things and a lot of people and, and about myself. And that view comes from your thoughts. So. Your thoughts shape your life. So be conscious about them and choose which thoughts you allow inside. So I suffered for six years from 12 to 18 from a lot of different events as losing my dad, having a chronic heart disease, not fitting in the school system, finding life very boring and unexciting. Suicidal thoughts started coming in my mind as that was a way out of the pain that I was feeling. In that moment when I was at the, the lowest points and actually was going to commit suicide, I got so scared of myself. The realization kind of hit me how deep I was lost in this darkness. I knew that I was 100% able to do it. And knowing or realizing that I was in that moment scared the shit out of me. No one through those six years, even though people knew something was not right, even though I tried to <clears throat> reach out to a teacher and tell her that I something was not good with me, no one took it serious and I didn't know who to talk to. But in that moment, I realized that no one is gonna save me, that I had to save myself. The next day on school, as weird as it was you know no one said anything because no one knew anything and you know how could anyone knew something if i never said anything about it and that's in the end that the main thing that i want to mean is that even though wounds from the inside bleed as strongly as wounds from the outside and even could hurt a lot more you can't expect everyone to know that you're going through something you can't expect people to just know that it would be great but you can't expect that you need to step up and take care of yourself. Become your own savior. Be the leader of this human being that you've been given and do what is needed. Read books on that subject, what you're struggling with at the moment, which is a really powerful thing. If you're struggling also with suicidal thoughts, then read books about that subject or audiobooks or podcasts, or if you're struggling with loneliness or depression or just anger or anything. There's books on any kind of subject. There's information out there in the world on any kind of subject to help you. And then of course, you know, there's psychologists and therapists that can help you to actually progress. Take care of yourself. You've been given this being. It's your responsibility also to take good care of it and not just put a patch on those wounds outside, but also go inside you and apply the needed treatments to heal those wounds. So be your own savior and be there for you. I'm sure this has happened in your life as well, that you bought something that you thought like, this is gonna make me extremely happy. You bought it and it made you happy for a couple of days. But then a few months later, that happiness is just gone. Just from that alone, you can already know that happiness, you cannot put happiness in the future because once you achieved or once you bought that or once you got that job or once you got your, you know, that relationship, that's gonna disappear and you're gonna look for something else. Never really appreciating anything ever. Never really actually being happy. Happiness is not one big choice. It's a hundred different decisions we make every day. What that means is happiness is you right now by making small decisions every day, having positive thoughts, treating yourself with kindness, practicing gratitude, 
doing meditation, doing things that you love, going outside and, and just appreciating the weather or actually when you are in a relationship, actually appreciating that person and actually thanking that person for being there. Small positive decisions lead to happiness, leads to a happy life. So happiness is not one big choice, but a hundred different decisions we make every day. A lot of people have an underlying reason why they're doing something, why they're being nice or why they're offering help or whatever. The thing is, if you do that, you're gonna be disappointed a lot of times because you've put expectations. Try to just give because you simply want to give. And this does a few things. First of all, it doesn't create that disappointment and frustration because you didn't put any expectations up. Whatever afterwards would happen, it doesn't matter because you're just doing it because you care. And that's the second point. If you can just give without expecting something, it means it's coming from a place from here. It means because you care more about doing it than the outcome. This video here that I'm making right now, I, I've set zero expectations on it. Like, I don't care who in the end is gonna watch it or that no one is gonna watch it. I create this because I just care about creating it. And everything that I've ever done, I try to just do because I care about the work. I care about the value that I'm trying to put in it and without making any expectations. And that's a very powerful thing if you can do that. So give without expecting and do it more because you care. If you can do that, a lot of actually beautiful things will start to happen. With social media, it is super easy to compare ourselves. It's never been easier than before to do that, right? Through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, whatever. It's so easy to compare ourselves. The danger behind that is there's always gonna be someone who has more followers, who is better looking than you, who takes better photos, who makes better vlogs, who makes more money, who is more successful. There's always someone else was gonna be one of those things, always. Many people spend a lot of time just looking at other people and feeling very miserable actually in doing that because they feel that they can never be as pretty as that person or make as mon much money as that you know person or have that many followers or, or whatever. And the danger with that is that you will lose yourself. Compare yourself instead of others. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday. Try to build today on being a better version now from that version that you were yesterday. And each day do that over and over again. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday and you will come to see tremendous amount of growth actually happening in your life. You watching this, I appreciate it a lot, but don't fall into this trap of comparing you with me. You are you and I'm me. And with that, I mean that you should focus on your life. And hopefully, you know, what I'm sharing here will help you to be a better version of who you were yesterday. But don't get lost in consuming too much social media. Go less to social media and focus more on you. Focus more on the version you were yesterday and on improving it today. Be you. <laughs> it sounds so simple, but it can be a very tricky thing, especially if your parents want you to do a certain job or a certain study, uh, which is totally not in line with what you actually want to do. Stop pleasing them because you're gonna set yourself up for misery and you're just gonna create a very unhappy life and you're actually gonna lie to yourself because you're not being yourself, you're trying to be them. And you can't be them because you're not them, you're you, they're them. Do what makes you want to stand up. Do what makes you want to look forward to the future. Don't try to please others because you will never succeed in it. You just simply can't, you can try. You're gonna end up, you know, displeasing someone else. So you're always gonna go into this loop. So if, you know, you're gonna displease someone, 
then at least do it while you're actually doing something that you like, while you're actually being you. And being you will help you actually find happiness and live a more, more meaningful and purposeful life and even get you actually true friends who, who care about you. Because you can't make friends or not real friends if you're being someone else, right? You can't. So be you, it is very simple but so extremely important thing to get good at. A lot of people are really bad at it. They're really bad at being them because they care a little bit too much what other people think or what is expected in society. They are pretty much living the life of someone else. Many times leading to depression or burnouts or, or just, um, yeah, not a great life. So be you and be good at it. You know, happiness is a word that is overused. It's very hard for some people to even understand what happiness actually means. What I would say is don't strive for happiness, instead strive for contentment. And in general, happiness and unhappiness are both peak moments in life caused by, you know, you, when you buy something, you feel this peak moment of happiness or when you eat something really delicious, you have this peak moment of happiness. But that state will flourish throughout the day. You know, you can eat a cake and you feel great and happy. And then when you weight yourself and you see a few extra kilos on there, that happiness just all of a sudden goes away. Like a lot of people think they should be surfing off on this wave of happiness all the time. And then when they feel not that happy, they think they're doing something wrong. The truth is, it's just unrealistic to be in that peak state all the time. That's not realistic. Therefore, in the middle of you know happiness and unhappiness, in the middle, you got contentment. And contentment is being grateful for what you currently have, appreciating and being grateful for what is currently in your life. Happiness and unhappiness, peak moments that you don't have too much control sometimes over. Contentment is balance. You can be content right now. Anyone can be content right now. It's balance and in there you can also find peace. So I'm gonna end this video here with that last lesson and um, I'm gonna cut this uh, video in, you know, part one being about my personal life lessons then. And part two gonna be about the most impactful lessons that I've learned in these 25 years about my career. Now, one more time in the description of this video, that's where you can find all the books, audiobooks, podcasts, people that have had the most impact on my personal life. And uh, I hope to see you soon in part two, which I'm probably gonna film tomorrow because it's quite late. <laughs>